Good evening and welcome. Tonight, we will be going over the history and geography of Argyle and Butte in Scotland. This region is located on the western coast of Scotland. And as you can see, it's made up of many, many different islands big peninsulas, and this section here, this big inland section, this is Argyle proper. The area is filled with many different locks, or lakes, and different mountains and monroes, or very big hills, and lots of interesting moles, which is another Scottish geographic term for a place that's very rocky with no trees. The most famous, of course, being right down here. Well, you'd expect what you see. The Mole of Kintyre, as in the Paul McCartney song. But, let's say there are many, many different famous aspects about Argyle and Butte, which made it into kind of a tourist haven, which we'll talk a little bit about at the end of the history section, because people come to see the rolling hilly landscape with lots of little sheep grazing and all the colorful birds and sea life in the islands. It's a very beautiful, striking landscape, but what place in Scotland isn't, right? Let's see, let's I didn't write down anything in my notes for geography because I was like, there's, there's too much to mention. I'm going to forget something. These islands here, you can see Mole, there's Jura, Islay, and the others over here are part of the Inner Hebrides, which the Hebrides, in a nutshell, are most of the islands, like on this half of Scotland. There's the Outer and the Inner. The other islands here are technically not. You can see the island here, Erin, which is not part of Argyll and Butte. It used to be part of Butteshire, but it's no longer. We'll talk a little bit about that in history, too. This right here is Butte. It rhymes with cute. And let's see, you can see lots of firths as well, another Scottish geographic term, which is basically more like a... Uh, Almost like a fjord, right? Like a, a coast area. And what else? What else? What else? What else? I think that's about it for geography. We're going to look extensively for this area on Google Earth. So let's get into the history section and learn about this real incredible area. Because this area has been inhabited for a long, long time, probably for as long as humans have lived in Great Britain. There are lots of ancient sites, lots of cairns, lots of stone circles, and ancient monuments from the people who used to live here. But the Scots, the actual Scots, would have arrived in this region around... 500 CE, and I say that because there were many different groups that lived in what's now Scotland. You had the Picts, you had the Gales, etc., etc., but these are the actual Scots, or the Scotty, I guess, as they were known back then. But very famously around that time, St. Columba arrived on the island of Iona, right here and built a church and chapel there in the year 563. One of the earliest churches were built in probably like Great Britain, Scotland, to be honest. It still looks really good today. It's been very well preserved. There's lots of beautiful ruined churches all throughout the area here that have crumpled and been reclaimed by nature, but that's a really We'll check it out on Google Earth, too. And 
the lords and kings that rose to power in this region established the kingdom of Dalrada. Dalrada, I believe it's pronounced. And ruled this area for quite some time. And they battled against the Vikings, the Norse invaders who came in conquering it. Slowly but surely they did. They started to claim many islands and build their own little forts and, you know, bring their little Viking families and establish their lifestyle here. And the Norse culture merged with the Gaelic culture that lived here to create its own very distinct Norse Gaelic culture. A lot of the ancient Norse names are still around in this area today. There are lots of little legacies left behind from that time. But the Vikings and the Norsemen eventually just morphed into the Kingdom of Norway. And Norway would try to officially claim these islands. They met with resistance from the Scottish people living here. And those battles went on until 1263, when the Norse, the Norwegians at this point, were officially fended off, and the area retained its identity. Sometime during that, I couldn't find an exact date in my research, but the Kingdom of the Isles was established out here. Reminded me kind of the Iron Islands in Game of Thrones, like the Great Joys, right? The Lord of the Isles, the ruler was known as. And established their own kingdom. Again, a very Norse Gaelic mix, cultured culture that ruled from here. But all of the area here, we had Argyll and the islands out here were officially all ceded over to Scotland in 1266. Officially became part of Scotland. The kings, or the king of Scotland, I should say, really asserted himself here and said, this is Scotland. And the land was eventually divided up into different shires, which means they were ruled by a sheriff. And that was a post that was inherited, so it was not so much like you think sheriff, you think like a policeman or something, right? Like a law, a law upholder, the person in charge of the rules. But it was definitely more of like a, a lordship, like a title, you know, like a real official title. And many of the areas were ruled over by the various clans, which... I've done many videos on Scotland. We're not getting into all of the clan details because it's way too extensive. It goes back way too far. And this area had many different clans, so just know that there were many different clans that ruled from here. Clans, if you don't know, in Scottish history were families, right? Ruling families. Many different lords ruling over and the many castles that were built in Argyll and throughout the islands here. Most of which are now ruined and beautiful, but some are still around. But the sheriffs and the lords and all of that were pretty much dissolved in 1747, a time of a lot of changes in Great Britain at that time. A lot, a lot. Everything was restructured, revolution and all of that. And the the sheriffs officially, you know, lost their power and it became more of a administrative um, council system that they still have today. Couldn't really find a lot of history stuff about the entire region until kind of uh, World War II, 
the islands all have their interesting little histories, but nothing too remarkable. Mostly just farmers and things. World War II was important to the area because many of the small islands and many of the towns along the coast here were commandeered by the military and turned into little bases. The U.S. had some bases over here too in the islands and it was mainly used for submarines. But they became little military outposts. And like I said, today it's really turned toward tourism to attract a substantial income. There's lots of whiskey and other types of spirits, alcoholic beverages made in this area. And from what I've read, it's mostly Glaswegians, because Glasgow is literally where it here, that come to enjoy the beautiful countryside and enjoy the fresh air and nature and the sea and all of the wonderful things to do and look at in the area. Oh, I forgot to mention Erin, the Isle of Erin, because it was during that reshuffling in the 1700s that it was moved to a different region. It was part of Butte in the book. So long ago. So why don't I go grab my tablet? Because that's where all the exciting things are to see. I want to show you some really cool sites in this area. So let's get into it. Let's go. So here we are. Our Guile and Butte Council. There's a little slideshow here. Which I like. Because one, you can see the big castle where the current Duke Argyle lives. I believe it's Duke. The rest of the slideshow is this cute little coastal area. These very quaint, almost like Norwegian Danish style in the bright colors and little seaside windows. It's very quaint. But we have lots more start off up here in Argyle. I'm going to take you to the town of Kilmartin because there's a lot of ancient history here in Kilmartin. If we just tap on the name here, we can see one of the beautiful stones in the stone circles that has survived. And there's a very, very old church, a very old graveyard. But there's lots of different little legacies from different times. The history here, you can see the some brave warriors there. Really beautiful stonework there. <laughs> and this is interesting. This is actually a, there's a stone circle within this mound of stones too, from the ancient times. There's a really cool museum here that shows a lot of what life used to be like in this town. An old home here, I assume. Some kind of dwelling. There's the old church. Here, I wish I could zoom in to show you. Maybe I'll just lift it up. It might get blurry. But um, I believe these are also um, grave markings. The ancient lords or warriors who lived or fought here. It's really pretty. There's some more beautiful stones there left by the ancients. The Gaelic Greed and Greed. Get a closer look at one of these stone mounds. Isn't that neat? But yeah. An old cross there in the heart of this church. make sure to show you that because that's the ancient history. Let's head over. I'm trying to think of all the things I wanted to show you. There's just so much. We're going to head over to the Isle of Butte here because the major town here is Rothsay. And I was looking around. 
I'm looking for interesting things to show you and Roxy, you know, here's the Beat Museum. I didn't actually did I look at this? Is there anything interesting here? Oh, all kinds of neat artifacts. Old castle there. Oops. Old castle. Sorry if you can hear my upstairs neighbor stomping around. I'm filming this a lot earlier than I normally would. Oh, the sea castle. Like little friends. <laughs> but I was poking around and I found uh, there was a museum up here and I'm like, what's this museum? And it's the Victorian Toilet Museum. <laughs> oh, you can see some, we call them urinals in America. Some ancient toilets, <laughs> the pull-down chain and everything. Some old sinks here, wash your hands after you use the toilet. So, my, my sister was like, I gotta know more about this place, because I was looking through Google Earth with her, and she you know, went to the museum's website, was reading all about the toilet museum, and apparently it's a men's only toilet, uh, obviously, and they're all still functional, and apparently you can just use them. Uh, the, the, only, the only museum I've ever seen where you can just straight up use the items on display as they were intended. How interesting. Here's a cool old ruined church right here, St. Blaine's Chapel. There are many, many sites like this all across our ghetto beat. Old ancient ruined churches and castles and things, old graveyards. So pretty. Now you can really tell from this map the glaciation that occurred so long ago. Just the, you can even see like the divide here of just, this was once all frozen when this wasn't, and just those glaciers just melted and scraped across, leaving this incredible landscape. While we're down here, let's check out the Mall of Kintyre. Mist rolling in from the sea. My desire is only to be a hero. Where's, nothing's popping up. There we go. Hopefully that's so the moles you can see. An expanse where there's really no trees. It's all quite rocky along the lovely shoreline here. I'm singing the Paul McCartney song because he, apparently he actually owns a farm not far from here in Kintyre. Sheepies. And he wrote the song to commemorate the Mall of Kintyre. If you look it up and listen to it, it's going to live in your head for forever, so be warned. Paul McCartney's my favorite Beatle, so I'm fine with just so you know, he writes many songs that just live in your brain for the rest of his life. And this is one of them. How beautiful. Very lovely place here. I also tried looking up to see if there was any other reason why this place was so important. And nope, it's just Paul McCartney really liked it. Everything very soft though. Definitely an old Norse name. Be careful not to wind up in Ireland. It's right there. Let's see. I think I was poking around this way. I didn't really see. I mean, there's lots of cool things to see. The strand beach, stuff like that. But I don't know. I can only show you so many landscapes. But beaches in the UK, unless you're in like southern England, aren't really like grab your towel and sunscreen surfboard. They're very They're not, you know, you have to bring your coat and warm shoes. Let's see what else I wanted to show you. There's something really cool I want to show you, but I want to save it for last. Oh, I should show you. I don't know. This is the Abbey and Nunnery. You can tell it's definitely been perked up a bit since it was first built in the 500s old Celtic cross there, but you can see it retains so much of that very old-timey Christianity on it. There's so many crosses being preserved. And uh, one of the former Dukes of Argyle buried here. The cool stone. 
Mm -hmm. There's St. Columba with the stained glass window. Very cool old furniture. I love all the stones. It's all different sizes, all pieced together in big fireplace. It's so pretty. There's a little chapel here. All of these incredible stone markers telling stories of ancient warriors and the Lord. Martin's Cross, this magnificent 8th century cross stands on the site it's occupied for over a thousand years I wish there was a picture of it <laughs> we probably saw it before but very fascinating and you can see like down here is Columbus Bay where St. Columba would have come from Ireland it's a little lab right there to bring Christianity to the Scots And as always, I encourage you to play around on Google Earth yourself. See all the neat sites that you have to go up here. Yeah, nope, it's not it. Where was it? It's not there, this, but I want to see what this is. It's been the second highest mountain on the island of Mo. Oh, I did see this. Big, beautiful mountain shot. Let me see, there was a little three rocks viewpoint. I'm finding more things, see, like that's pretty. I found a neat little Monroe over here. But of course it's not popping up. Oh well. Maybe you'll find it. It's on Mo. But you can see the various moles here. Remember if there's anything else I wanted to show you before I go to the the thing I want to show you the most. I think I got all the big ones that I recall. There's so much more to see now. I think it's up here. There's like that was all I did. <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. You already know what I'm looking for. If if you know, you know. You're probably screaming at me. Longo, another great Viking name there. Trish and Shiles. That's not it. Ugh, a little pork. <laughs> um, we're going to find. Let's see what's this. The Hebrides there. I thought it was like over here. There's Trish and Trish. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, for oh, I was so close. I just had to zoom in a little more. So, this is another great Viking name. This is the island of Staffa. And down here, along the coast, if you've seen the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland, it's the exact same type of rock formation, except a little more eerie. This is Fingal's Cave. And you see these basalt col columns here, creating this incredible scene, right? At my gym, they have, um, you know, they have TVs at the gym, and they have one that um, just shows, like, inspirational workout things, and one of them is a guy canoeing through this cave, and I keep watching it, like, oh, I'm gonna talk about that soon, and now it's finally happening. I'm so excited. <laughs> but isn't this so beautiful? It's just it's such an eerily magnificent formation. It absolutely looks man-made, but there's more porks. Like, you know, almost bigger than man. Like, what am I trying to say? Like, what's, it, what's inspired you most today? That's a great question. Like, <laughs> something that's... Oh dear, look at this blobby friend. What am I trying to say? It's like a, a god creation, right? Like a deity came and made this. 
which I'm sure the ancients believed, right? For sure. It's, um, Finn McCool built them in Northern Ireland, right? But that was what I wanted to share the most, is Finn's cave. <laughs> I've been waiting to share that for months. But let's find one more place to check out before we go. You can see Loch Lomond's over there. Shout outs to my friends Christy and Neil. find a random slideshow. Whoa. The highest mountain in the Kowal Peninsula. Look at that. They made a little shape there. But, that being said, I was trying to find a slideshow to close out the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. Oh, Next, in my series, we'll be going to a completely different type of island. We'll be going to the Maldives. Those are the kinds of beaches where you need your towel and swimsuit and surfboard. <laughs> I can't wait to show you more. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you found this video to be relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a good, good, good night. Oh, I forgot to zoom out so you can see where we are. Let's zoom out. So there's the United Kingdom. This island is great.